Thank you, ladies, for that, and it uh, goes well with the message, um, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, Thanksgiving, and so I realize this is just the first Sunday in, thanks- in November, and we're several weeks away from Thanksgiving, but um, I'd like to take uh, Sunday nights in November and preach on uh, an attitude of gratitude. If we look at the scriptural phrase, we would say this, a spirit of Thanksgiving and I'll explain that in a moment, but an attitude of gratitude. So if you're able and willing to join me in standing, if you'll, uh, uh, if you're able and willing to join me, if you'll join me in standing in honor of reading of God's word, and we'll read the first two verses of Psalm 95, and then we'll skip over to the 140th Psalm, Psalm 140, and read one verse there. Psalm 95, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Uh, I am thankful for the song that was sung. Uh, Thank you, Lord. And and it was a song sung uh, about thanksgiving, literally giving thanks to the Lord. I appreciate that, ladies. Psalm 140 in verse number 13. You'll find your way over there. Psalm 140 in verse number 13. Surely, hmm, surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. Surely, surely we'll give thanks. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. I'm going to preach on this. I mentioned an attitude of gratitude. I like to preach on this thought or this theme, if you will, each Sunday night in the month of November. Um, and uh, I'll explain a little bit more of that. We'll have a word of prayer and I'll explain that. An attitude of gratitude. Father in heaven, Oh, God, we thank you for who you are and what you do for us. Lord, we want to give thanks. Um, I, I, I know this is kind of a time of the year to think about this, but this is something that we need to do year-round, and maybe this is something that will help us to remember year-round, to give thanks, to praise you, to lift up your name, uh, to give glory to you. I, I'm thankful for the testimonies this evening, a number of people praising and thanking you for who you are and what you've done, for your person, the person of uh, the Holy Spirit, and, and uh, we, we're thankful, Lord, for, for the privilege to, to serve and uh, to honor you, to live for you, to be saved, and, and help us, uh, Lord, I pray. to uh, Lord, I, I certainly don't mean this to be scolding or anything like that. I, I know there's so many people that have a, uh, um, a thankful heart, and, and they do it on purpose. I, I pray you'd help each one of us just to be thankful and, and realize the protection that it gives us from uh, being ungrateful and then uh, forgetting who you are and what you've done for us. And so help us, Lord, I pray to be thankful. I have a, a spirit of thanksgiving, an attitude of gratitude, we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray it. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Uh, I've titled it An Attitude of Gratitude because uh, we want to have, um, especially in the month of November, uh, a, a, an attitude of being thankful the, the Bible words would be a spirit of thanksgiving. Attitude, the, word, the, the Bible word there is spirit. We'll come to that in a moment. And the Bible word for uh, gratitude would be thanksgiving, a spirit of thanksgiving. When I say spirit of thanksgiving, it almost sounds like uh, it's a book that uh, Charles Dickens wrote, you know, the spirit of Christmas or the spirit of a holiday, but it's the spirit of thanksgiving. Uh, of all the holidays, I've, I've probably preached on thanksgiving more than any other, and there's a reason for that, I believe. Uh, that the celebration of Thanksgiving, or and not necessarily the, the holiday itself, but the act of Thanksgiving is more beneficial in our relationship with the Lord than the celebration of any other holiday. And you say, wait a minute, what about uh, Jesus Christ coming to earth? What about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Certainly those are important holidays. Those are important things. Uh, yes, they are. I'm very thankful that Jesus Christ came to earth. I'm very thankful that Jesus Christ not only died uh, for our sins, but he also, he rose from the grave. In fact, if uh, he didn't raise from the grave, then his death would not be that important. Uh, It would just be like any other death. The the, the importance of his death is that he rose from the dead, uh, that he rose from the grave. And I'm very thankful for those. But in regard to our relationship with the Lord, I think the celebration or the act of thanksgiving is more beneficial in celebrating that than it is celebrating the the birth or resurrection of Jesus Christ. I think it's a a biblical 
uh, mandate or command where we don't see a command to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. I'm certainly not against it. But the at, to have an attitude or a spirit of thanksgiving, giving thanks is a, uh, a, a godly mindset. And I think we'll see tonight and throughout this month uh, how important it is. It protects us. Uh, when I was in Bible college, our, our um, vice president, uh, Brother uh, Bob Ross, he used to say on a regular base, basis, in the month of November, we get to th- uh, November in chapel, every day in chapel in November, he would say, Thanksgiving is to be practiced. And, and it's something I look at my wife, uh, she remembers uh, that, and, and uh, that's something that we, we would hear every uh, November. And I think it's something that uh, we need to remember year round, but uh, to bring up because of the holiday that we have uh, coming up at the end or near the end of this month. Uh, Thanksgiving, the Bible word for Thanksgiving. Let's do this. We're going to use our Bibles quite a bit. Look at Psalm 140, verse number 13. You're right there. Surely the righteous shall give thanks. Now, thanks is something that you say or you, uh, uh, um, uh, that you display, and giving is something that you actually do. Thanksgiving Unlike any other of the holidays, Thanksgiving is an act, right? It's something that you do. It's not just uh, uh, um, celebrating turkey and watching football or eating turkey and watching football. That's not how we celebrate Thanksgiving. Celebrating Thanksgiving would be actually telling or giving thanks. And it needs, it needs to be practiced among believers, uh, um, we read Psalm 95. Let's go back to Psalm 95. And verse number 1 says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful... What's that word? Noise. Thanksgiving can't be done without an audible expression. Uh, giving thanks is not something that's done... Now, I'm going to preach tonight on an attitude, and we'll see why, uh, and we'll kind of develop some thoughts throughout the month. Uh, um, but Thanksgiving can't be done just in our heart. You can't walk around with just a, a thankful heart and that be enough. It must be done outwardly. It must be said. It must be expressed. It is something that must be said. And, and we see that. So when we say uh, um, uh, an attitude of gratitude, gratitude, the, the Bible word for giving Thanks is, or, or gratitude is thanksgiving, giving thanks. It's found throughout Scripture from the book of Leviticus to the book of Revelation. And then I said an attitude that the Bible word is spirit. Proverbs 16, 32 talks about a spirit. It talks about he that ruleth his spirit is, uh, is better than he that taketh a city. And, and the, the, uh, the uh, idea there is to be able to have the right attitude, to control your attitude, uh, to have the right spirit. And so when I say spirit of thanksgiving, I'm not talking about uh, you know, sometimes we, and I, I've mentioned this in the past, and I don't want to belabor a point, but uh, um, I enjoy Christmas time. I enjoy Christmas season. I, I do feel like sometimes we come to the place uh, in our society where we worship the season of Christmas, the, the warmth of all the lights and the songs and all those things more than we're really worshiping Jesus Christ. I preached a message one time, and, and, and this might, some of this might come up in another message, but I preached a message one time on how the, uh, I'm, uh, uh, how the, the, uh, how the Grinch stole Thanksgiving. I'm, I was going to say how many remember that message, but I, I don't want to be uh, uh, disappointed. Uh, I was talking to a pastor the other day, and he said, you know, I think what we ought to do is we ought to just rotate every six months. All the pastors, you get about uh, 10 pastors, just rotate every six months. That way, you're always in a, a consistent uh, uh, a time of, uh, of that, that honeymoon period. Everybody loves you. And right about the time they start to not like you again. And he said, and you could preach the same messages and preach the same messages people wouldn't know anyway. And so he, anyway, he was kind of being sarcastic. But uh, I, I won't ask who, who uh, remembers that message. I preached uh, how the Grinch stole Thanksgiving. And, and I, I think that uh, if we can say... Uh, we, we think about the Grinch and uh, stealing Christmas and so forth. But if Satan can stop us from being thankful. Uh, turn your Bibles real quick over to the book of Romans to, to chapter 1. 
Romans chapter 1. We know what's going on in the book of Romans. It talks about the gospel and not being ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God and the salvation, the Jew first and also the Greek and, and, and how the, the gospel is given. But there are people with the gospel that didn't appreciate the gospel, that, didn't, that were not thankful for the gospel. Look what it says in, in uh, verse 20. Uh, no, I'm sorry, verse 21. Let's go back to verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world were, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. By the way, the word Trinity is not found in Scripture, but Godhead is. And, and we see that it's not just one, but it's three, three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, First John 5, 7. Uh, uh, and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Those that have the truth, that are not thankful, that do not glorify God, end up in a place where they are away from God. What happens? They became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish heart was darkened. What happens when we stop uh, uh, being thankful and we stop glorifying God? We start to think that all of life is about us. It's all about me. And so what I'd like to try to do tonight is just talk about having an attitude of gratitude, a spirit of thanksgiving, an inward attitude that results in an outward expression of thanks. Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. We've read about a noise. We've read about lips giving thanks to his name. I'm saying that thanksgiving is something that must be done outwardly. It must be, it's something that must be done and said with our mouth. And, and as we do it, it protects us. It keeps us close to him and, and, and keeps us, prevents us from forgetting what he's done for us. And so let me say this, number one, it starts in the heart. An attitude of gratitude, a, a spirit of thanksgiving starts in the heart. An attitude of gratitude, a, a spirit of thanksgiving must start where all actions start in the heart. Luke chapter 6, verse 43 says, For a, a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do gather figs, and nor, uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, um, for of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil heart, uh, e evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of, the, uh, for of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you come across someone who's never thankful, it, the, the reason might be they never give thanks, they never say thank you, not just to God, but to others. There's no uh, giving of thanks. Their lips never say thank you. Their, their lips are never showing gratitude to God. It's probably because in their heart there is no gratitude. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You can't go to a, an apple tree and, and, and get oranges. And that's what this passage is saying. A good tree has good fruit. A corrupt tree has corrupt fruit. You can't get, go to a good tree and get corrupt fruit. You can't go to a, a corrupt fruit and get a good fruit. You can't do that. What is in the heart will come out. The reason many don't give thanks, the reason people, many people have forgotten to give thanks to God or have failed to, to give thanks to God is because there is no gratitude. There is no thankfulness in our heart. We're not looking toward God and saying, thank you for what you've done for us. Again, ladies, thank you for the song tonight. I appreciate that. I didn't know they were going to sing, sing that song, but it goes so well with the message. When, when you begin to list the things that God has done for you, and, and you recognize that they come from Him, it causes us to have a, a heart of gratitude. Number two, let me say this. I said it. It starts in the heart. Number two, it reflects a reflection. Now, that sounds kind of obvious, but it, it is reflecting uh, uh, something that, that, that is, is seen. It shows that a person is thinking about God's blessing. What I'm saying is it, it shows others that we're reflecting on something else or thinking about something else. I, I'm not, trying not to be, uh, I guess I'll try to be too cute with my words. I hope that makes sense. It shows that someone is thinking about something else. 
it reflects a reflection. It shows that a person is thinking about God's blessing. An attitude of gratitude, a spirit of thanksgiving, is always a result of someone who has stopped thinking about their own needs and began to think about what they have received. If you want to have a spirit of thanksgiving, you stop looking at the, 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 the burdens, the problems, and you start looking at the blessings. You start looking at what God's done for you. Let me look at, read this verse, Psalm 18, verses 48 and 49. He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, we read that and we think, oh, yeah, he gave me victory. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, he delivereth me from mine enemies. The psalmist, David in this, this psalm, had enemies. Well, where is the focus? On the enemies or the deliverance from the enemies? Look what it says. It says, uh, uh, he delivers me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise against me. Thou deliverest me from the violent man. Uh, is the focus on the violent man or the deliverance from the violent man? If you have someone that is thankful, it, it, it reflects or it shows that there is someone thinking about the goodness of God thinking about what God's done for us. We are not thankful. We stop being thankful when we stop focusing on the goodness of God or what God's done for us. Well, God is so good. And I realize there are burdens in life and there are challenges. There are, there are uh, uh, griefs in life. Uh, there are times to mourn. There are times to, uh, uh, to, uh, to grieve uh, but in all things, we should be thankful. No matter what we're going through, God is still good. And if we're at a place where we're being thankful, there's a spirit of thanksgiving. It shows that you're looking at the blessings of God rather than the burdens of life. It reflects a reflection. It starts in the heart. It reflects a reflection. It is conveyed, thirdly, and Finally, it is conveyed by what you say. Biblical thanksgiving is always verbal. Now, I'm going to talk about a spirit of thanksgiving and hope that, that throughout the month of November we can uh, 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 gender and gender in our hearts, uh, 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 create a, a work, uh, 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 work up, uh, uh, have in our hearts a, a, an attitude of gratitude, a spirit of thanksgiving uh, that, we can, that we can have, but... Uh, if that's the case, it will be expressed verbally. It will be expressed verbally. An attitude of gratitude, a spirit of thanksgiving will start inwardly, but will always be expressed outwardly. I mentioned Hebrews 13, 15. We just read it. By him, therefore, let us sacrifice, the, uh, uh, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Something that we say with our mouth. Uh, Psalm 30, verse number 12 says this, To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent, O Lord, I will give thanks unto thee forever. It is something that is verbal. It is something that is done outwardly. It is conveyed by what you say. Starts in the heart. It reflects a reflection. It's conveyed by what you say. We often, uh, we get to November, Thanksgiving time. We, we have Thanksgiving. We often will ask the question, what are you thankful for? How many ever heard that around Thanksgiving table or at, at Thanksgiving time, November? What are you thankful for? Well, I'm going to ask a question, a, a, a couple of questions differently. Certainly, uh, we could say, what are you thankful for? But let me ask this, how are you giving thanks? Not just what are you giving thanks for, because if you, if you determine, all right, I'm going to give thanks, that, that's, you're, you're going to have things to be thankful for. You don't need someone to say, what are, what are you thankful for? I'm here to ask you tonight, how are you giving thanks? What way, audibly, verbally, are you giving thanks have you expressed thanks to your spouse? 
Have you expressed thanks of God to your spouse? I think that, that primarily we need to give thanks to God, but I think giving thanks to others is, um, is important as well. To, to be thankful, not to be thinking about ourselves, but to be thinking about others. How, I'm here to ask you, how are you going to give thanks? It's Thanksgiving time, it's, it's November, and, and we need to have a spirit of thanksgiving. How do you, have you or will you plan to give thanks? Are you going to sing? Can you imagine if a coworker heard you singing praises to the Lord? Hey, what is he doing? What is she doing? Well, I'm thankful to the Lord. I'm thankful. Imagine if a coworker heard you sing, Amazing grace, how sweet does... What are you doing? I'm just thankful for God's grace. And how amazing it is and, and how great it is in my life that, that I was a wretch... And I'm thankful for God's goodness to me. I'm thankful for his amazing grace. How will you give thanks? And then let me ask you this. How, secondly, how will you stay thankful? How will you stay thankful? Say, Pastor, I, 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 we, Thanksgiving is coming up. And, and uh, you know, Thanksgiving... We have Thanksgiving, and then on Black Friday, Thanksgiving's done. It's Christmas time. Get rid of the thanks. Like, I'm, not a, I'm not opposed to Christmas, you know, the celebration of Christmas and the coming of Jesus Christ. And I like uh, joy to the world and, and, and oh, come all ye faithful. And it just is, well, maybe not just as much as some. Some, it's almost like a, uh, uh, I'm not being critical. I'm just, those are, I enjoy the Christmas time. But can I tell you that Thanksgiving is not going to end on the, what is it, the fourth Thursday in Thanksgiving? Or the fourth Thursday in November? It, it shouldn't end then. How are you going to stay faithful? How are you going to remind your spouse? How are you going to remind your children to stay thankful? For years now, we've, uh, and, and I'm not putting ourselves on a pedestal because we're not the, uh, the standard by any means. Uh, I'm just telling you something that we've done to try to, try to remain thankful. Uh, throughout the year, devotions, our family devotions on Thursdays. The kids call them thankful Thursdays. But other days of the week when it comes to prayer time, we um, have prayer requests. Pray for this, pray for this, pray for this person. I try to encourage them to pray for others and think about other people rather than uh, we got a, a test today at school or whatever it is about our needs, but try to think about others. But then on Thursdays, uh, we don't take prayer requests. We, we just say, what are you thankful for? And when we go to the Lord, and I, I try to do this even on Wednesday nights with the, with the praises. I, I don't know if that's evident or not, but I, I try not to go to the Lord and say, God, we need this, give me this, I need this, give me this. I, I try to say, God, here are things to be thankful for. We certainly need your presence here. We want, want your presence here. But can I, can I tell you, can we just come before your presence and, and thank you? Can we just come and praise you? Can we just tell you that we're grateful for what you've done for us? And, 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 on, and again, I, we're not the standard. I, I, I'm, don't try to, I'm not trying to put us on a, on a pedestal. I'm just maybe trying to give you an idea of something that we've done. You can do something different. But on Thursdays, we just say, all right, what are you thankful for? Thankful Thursday. I mean, not just in, in, in November, but in December and January and March and June and July and uh, throughout the year. But what are you thankful for? I don't ever want to get to the place. I don't want my family ever get to the place where we stop glorifying God and are not thankful for what God's done for us. We won't go back to Romans 1, but go back, if you, if you have time, go back to Romans 1 and start to read all the repercussions. What's happened to those that have the truth, that had the truth, didn't glorify God, were not thankful. In the end, they, their minds were turned over to, they, be, they were turned over to reprobate minds. And being thankful will protect us from going down roads that, uh, that we never intended to go. Sometimes when you see that there's a, a Christian that's uh, uh, gone off and into sin or, or uh, uh, gone a different direction, and, and you scratch your head and say, man, that, that person, I really thought 
I, th- I thought if anyone had it, that person had it. How many know what I'm talking about? You think, what happened there? I, I, don't, I don't know what happens in every situation, but in many, many situations, what happens is we stop looking at what God's done for us. We stop being thankful. There's not a spirit of thanksgiving. I'm not just talking about November, but there's not a spirit in th- of thanksgiving. And so I'm here to ask you, how will you give thanks? And then how are you going to stay thankful? And, and, and it's a brief message, short message tonight. Uh, but I ask you those questions by way of invitation. How are you going to stay thankful? Uh, how are you going to express your thanksgiving? How, how are you going to give thanks? And, and then how are you going to stay thankful? you have some time during invitation to respond to the Lord and say, God, this is what I'm going to do to express my thanksgiving. Not just in church, testimony time, but also in the world. We'll get, and we're going to cover this in some of the uh, messages in, in Sunday nights in November, that it's not just in front of the congregation, but it's also in front of the heathen. How are you going to express your thanksgiving and how are you going to stay thankful? Father in heaven, Lord, I'm thankful for your goodness to us. And Lord, it's a very simple, very, uh, uh, very succinct uh, thought tonight. Help us, Lord, I pray, to be thankful. I, I, I think it's so important that we remind ourselves frequently to be thankful for what you've done for us, to express it uh, verbally and to stay thankful. Help us, Lord, I pray in that regard. We pray it in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed.